This is the Men of High Value channel. My name is Joseph Darling. I wanted to do a quick video on politics when it comes to femininity and masculinity. This is going to be an interesting one because I've chosen to not use a manuscript and basically just speak from my heart. Okay, so let's get it happening. Our goal in life is to become more masculine. Masculinity is the name of the game. Once we attain masculinity in its purest form, we will have arrived. Okay? You understand that? Femininity is where nothing works for us. No girls are attracted to us. Our emotions are all over the place, so we're not consistent. We're not achieving our goals and dreams. And if we do make money by some form of miracle, then we spend it all and waste it, and then we put on debt on ourselves, and then just things get worse and worse and worse the older we get, okay? You don't want femininity. Femininity is not for you. Leave that for the girls. Masculinity, however, is that which we are striving for. You start out with femininity when you're born until you're nine years old and then the sperm production starts beginning to happen. And during that time frame, if you learn to master the art of self-discipline and practice semen retention from the get-go, once you're 11, 12 years old, man, absolutely amazing things will happen for you. You'll have massive ambitions, massive desire to actually achieve things in your life and your life will be beautiful. Like literally, that's where it all starts. And then you start working and disciplining yourself and being okay with rejection. Rejection is awesome. Rejection is cool. Rejection is gonna be the thing that actually takes you to success and masculinity. Why? Because you become, you become toughened, you become hard, you become rough, you become tough, and you make things happen one small step at a time. No more time to be a girl, okay? It's time to become a man. What does that have to do with politics? It has everything to do with politics. Understand the woman and you will understand the world. When I say that, I literally am saying understand femininity and masculinity and you will understand the world. You see, socialism and capitalism are the two opposing forces basically in the world today. Capitalism basically says let's have a free market where basically it's free for all but the government come in and they protect people's property and their assets and the government makes sure that no one is stealing, no one is forcing and no one is killing each other for money in order for them to actually get back something that they have not earned themselves or created a win-win situation from. On the other hand, you have socialism, or in its purest form, communism. Socialism is about leaving no one behind, making sure that everyone has sufficient for their needs, and then they work, and then they basically share with everyone else. Sounds fantastic on paper, however, in practical terms, it doesn't work like that. In practical terms, and I've lived in Norway for 25 years, so I know what I'm talking about, Government comes in and they steal your stuff. It has nothing to do with what you've done, who you've served, what kind of situations you've been in in your life. No, no, they just take it and then they get to decide what they do with that property that was actually yours and now it's no longer yours. It belongs to the common, you know, common box here that we're sharing with everyone else. This is a very dangerous system because it allows the use of force for the politicians to get what it is that they want. That is top priority. And then when they have that power, they get to choose what happens with the people. Now, even if those people were good people, which is very often the case in the Scandinavian countries, eventually you'll always run out of other people's money because other people lose the motivation to work and they lose the motivation to go out and serve if it doesn't serve them too. Why should I go out and work if 70% of my income goes to the government and I have no idea what that money is spent on? Yes, they might give me a nice pie chart and say it goes to defense and it goes to healthcare and it goes to welfare and it goes to schooling and education, but it's my money. I decide what I get to do with it. 
I decide, no one else. Why? Because I'm masculine, it's my property. No one decides over my property. You get that? You understand? Believing in socialism is the most feminine view of politics you could possibly have. If you have that view that I am entitled to stuff, I am a victim, and we need to take care of all these people, but it needs to be done voluntarily. Voluntarily is the answer. Why? Because when we do good things voluntarily, and we get the blessings, we get the good stuff that comes back to us as a natural result of karma, guess what? We want to do more of it. And when we do more of it, we get more back. And then we do more and then we get more back. But socialism basically makes it so that we're forced to do good, which means that we don't get the reward of doing good. Karma doesn't come back from paying taxes. It doesn't. And if you say that you get back exactly what it is that you pay, <laughs> you haven't counted properly. Okay, there's so much money wasted, it is insane. And that is one of the biggest things that I've seen in the Scandinavian market is waste. And as a guy who loves to do good and who loves to help people and make sure that everyone is happy around him, it is an absolute nightmare to fight bureaucracy and red tape in order to do good in the world. It is insane. I completely, if there's something that I hate and abhor more than anything else, it is socialism and communism. It is one of the worst evils in the world. And if you do not understand why it is evil, you have not studied up on history. You haven't. The reason why people are voting for socialism more and more these days is because of their emotions. Oh, we've got to help everyone. We can't leave anyone behind. And what about the poor and the sick people? And what about the animals and global warming? No, we've got to figure out humans first and how they work and why they've got the emotions that they have. We first got to help the people who are helping other people. We first got to help the people who are actually providing jobs in the community. Right now, we're punishing the exact people that are helping people to get out of the poor situation that they're in. Understand that the fewer capitalists we have, the less jobs there are going to be. The government, on the other hand, wants to do good, so they end up blowing up and offering more and more people jobs. But what's that going to happen eventually when there's no more businesses? The businesses are going to shrink, there's not going to be money coming in anymore, and then there's no money going into the government, and then the government cannot employ people anymore. What's going to happen? Everything is going to collapse. And that's basically what's going on in a lot of countries in the world today. And it's not only that, it's, it's the pension bomb that is happening in the next few years. Do you understand the baby boomers? Okay? They're all retiring right now, and a lot of them have worked in the government. And all of those guys do not have a pension. The government has basically stolen their pension, as Robert Kiyosaki says in his newest book. How have they stolen it? I, I, I watched an interview when he was on Valuetainment explaining all of this, and I had to think a little bit, but I knew what he was talking about, but I was just like, how have they stolen their money? Like, they, they still have a pension. No, they don't. The reason why is because government is relying upon future generations to work and produce and be productive in order for pensions to be paid out in the future. Just like the bank doesn't sit on cash. Okay, what does the bank do? They get your money and then they put nice digits on the computer and then they give the money back out to other people who are borrowing money and paying them interest back so that you can give small puny interest back to the people that have put it in their bank account. Do you understand? The bank doesn't have any money. The moment we went off the gold standard in 1971, pff, everything changed. The whole game changed. Okay, now savers are losers. Again, like Robert Kiyosaki says. So those that work in the government and are expecting retirement funds, 
Well, that completely depends on who's going to work in the future to produce money and taxes for the government. If there's no one that are motivated to work because they're all entitled, they all have a victim mentality and they've got no jobs because they've got no skills and the reason why they don't have any skills is because of minimum wage that has to be raised all of the time and companies no longer can afford to actually hire people and train them and give them minimum wage, you're going to have some problems. And that is the time when poverty returns. We might not be able to avoid the downfall. Actually, the probabilities are slim to none. There's going to be an economic collapse in the future. When it's going to happen, no one knows. But there's not enough money anywhere anymore in governments, and especially the American government. But what we can do is we can start beginning to vote libertarian and promote libertarian philosophies all over the world so that we have someone that we can rely on and trust to build up government again so that there's no anarchy. Anarchy is the absolute worst possible thing that can happen when you basically have yourself and your gun and you've got to continuously be on your property to protect what you've got. Okay, it's gonna be very difficult to go out there and build businesses and do the things that we're doing right now because you've gotta protect yourself and you've gotta have your gun. Okay, this is anarchy here and people are gonna shoot each other because they're poor and they need food. You don't want to be in that situation, but that's where we're heading the more and more we vote for socialistic regimes and move towards communism. The faster people begin to understand libertarian views of no force, everything is voluntary, and we simply have government, limited government, only in terms of military, judiciary system of having the laws, and then the police to enforce those laws. If we just have that, that's the only thing we need, and very often in most governments, that's approximately 5% of the budget in the government. In America, it's approximately 10% or so, I'm not quite sure. But could you imagine decreasing the tax bills by 90% and getting rid of all of the laws, except for the laws of pretty much, you can do whatever you want, as long as you treat people nicely and you don't steal, force, or kill them. Do you understand? As long as there's no force going on in the world, we're going to have a pretty nice world, okay? And people are good and honest. 95% of us actually want to do good, want to help out people. But we don't have the chance because we're working for the government two thirds of the year. It's insane. I want you to be with me and be part of this Men of High Value movement, which is also a political movement of building up libertarian views everywhere, to get the government out of the boardrooms, to get the government out of our bedrooms, and to get the government to simply protect the property that we've got, and that we've worked for, and that we've created win-win situations in order to get. We should be rewarded for working, and we should be rewarded by profits for training people to become successful in their respective professions. Businesses can do that. Government has no role in taking from other people to give to themselves and to others. Get rid of it. But we're gonna do it steadily but surely, non-violently, the right way, and that is through the voting mechanisms that are in place today. Vote Libertarian